I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on Data Engineering. In this episode, we return to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to take a look at Execute Async, which is a way that we can kick off queries on our Snowflake database without having to wait for the result to come back to our code before our code continues running. And so it's a very, very handy way to kick off a whole bunch of processes at once when you don't need to wait for the result. And uh, that is a very, very handy thing and can make your code much more efficient. So without further ado, let's get to our execute async on Python on Snowflake. Need help or coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, so for this example, I'm using the default installation of Python from python.org and uh, make sure uh, because we're going to be using the snowflake connector make sure you install the snowflake connector with the square brackets pandas at the end of the name uh, so that you get the additional uh, libraries there uh, so i'm going to import uh, snowflake connector and uh, i'm going to uh, import the uh, the url I'm considering using an engine for this um, but I, I think I may end up just using the cursor, so that one might be optional. Um, uh, and uh, let's see, yeah, we'll, we'll give some feedback to the user, and um, we'll just say opening Snowflake connection, and then, uh, and then we'll make our connection equal to snowflake.connector.connect, and then we're gonna build our um, input for the uh, connect string here. We're gonna put in the values that we have uh, for our username and our password and all that kind of good stuff. Um, now I put some of these into variables up above there um, and above the import statements and uh, uh, so I've got uh, user equals snow user, password equals snow pass, account equals snow account and then I've got uh, warehouse uh, is going to be our project warehouse that we created in earlier episodes um, so make sure you check that out. I think it's episode two of this series and uh, database uh, will be our project database and the schema is going to be the project schema. Now it's very handy to put these into your uh, connection. You can do, you know, the warehouse database and schema, you can do it without those. Um, uh, and you can, you know, use the use statements in your SQL to change your context and things like that. But I find it's much more handy to just put it right into the connection. This is what I'm working with and this is how um, it's going to go here. So our next step is to create the cursor. So I've got CS is equal to the connection dot cursor. And uh, that gives us a cursor to play with um, that we can, you know, run some queries or do all kinds of stuff in there. And I'm going to, in this case, just to, uh, you know, get some basic data out. We have a little project tasks table in there that we created in some previous episodes. And it only has about, I think, 10 rows or something like that in it. So we're going to just grab that to start so that we can see, uh, we can see a regular query just getting executed and the output displayed on screen. Uh, I won't pull anything into pandas in this episode. I'll just use the cursor and just and just dump it out into in, into the uh, console here. Uh, so I'll say for row in CS and I'll print row and then I'll close our connection uh, which is gonna uh, close that off so that um, so that we don't leave that open. Make sure you always close your connections and then we'll say print done. Now that's going to give us uh, based off of our original you know execute there uh, using SQL um, that's our, you know, how things usually, you know, work when we don't use asynchronous uh, connections. Well, I scrolled up my, my password, I had to cover it over there. Um, but you can see there's the, uh, the connection.cursor. We've got our, our execute and we've got our SQL in there. And so if we hit F5 on this, um, it's going to uh, just give us a list output of what we want. And then we can, we'll pretend that we're going to use this list after we run something big that you know could take a long time and we're going to kick off the big one uh, in here in a second so this is the output we want to see just a few rows we want it to happen just as fast if we kick off a massive job just before this uh, we still want to have uh, you know just as fast as we saw there 
Okay, so from there I'm going to show you the table that's going to have the big job on it. I'll just select the top 100 records uh, from 1 million example, which is a, another video that we did earlier where we, we uh, pipelined a million records from SQL Server into Snowflake. And I'm just grabbing the top 100 records, not very imaginative data in there, <laughs> imaginative data, um, but uh, that's what we've got there. So I'm going to change that one to SQL 1, and, uh, and then I'm going to make SQL 2, uh, which is going to be our, um, our select, uh, you know, from project tasks again, and uh, select star from project task. So what we want to have happen this time is we want to, to create a scenario where uh, we want that list that you originally saw to, to pop up right away, even though we're going to kick off something uh, really big um, ahead of it. So in order to do that, I'm going to change this, and we're going to insert 100,000 rows um, into the 1 million example table. Now that should take a little while to, to execute. We could maybe even make it bigger, but in this case, uh, we know that 100,000 rows is probably going to take a second, maybe even uh, I don't know, up to 10 seconds maybe to, to run it, or if you had a very slow connection or whatever, it might be even longer. Um, actually, the connection wouldn't figure into this because the data is out there and <laughs> on, on Snowflake. So, um, But if it was, say, a million rows or whatever, it's going to take even longer than that. So we know that there should be some delay in doing 100,000 rows, um, you know, doing an insert. And, uh, and so... What we're going to do is we're going to kick off the insert first, and then we're going to run the select second. And we're going to see uh, when we use async that it's just lightning fast because we're just kicking off. We're sending the command in, into the database, and it's executing, and we're just our code doesn't even, it just fires off the command and then keeps going. It doesn't wait for any result. And that's what we want to see there. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the top 100,000 uh, number values uh, and we're going to add into the ID there, we'll add 2 million uh, so that we've got a series starting at 2 million. Um, so we'll say top 100,000 uh, number values plus 2 million and then we'll grab the text values and we won't change that so we can refer to it. And then we'll say from 1 million example where um, you know, where the, uh, uh, I guess we don't have a where because we've got a top one, 100,000 there. Okay, so we're just grabbing the top 100,000. Okay, so that should take a minute to run if we execute that on our cursor. Um, and uh, so what we're going to see is uh, when we uh, run our async, it's going to um, just kick it off and it's just going to go straight to our second command. But first, we need to um, separate these two and put in an execute statement for our uh, for our insert. And I need to put a bracket at the end there. There we go. And uh, now we can do our, our asynchronous uh, execution. And so what we'll do is uh, we'll get some feedback. We're kicking off our, our statement here. And something that we would have had to wait for, um, then uh, uh, that's just going to kick it off. Um, and so. Uh, just so that we have some feedback that we know that that's happening and then we will um, do the actual uh, asynchronous uh, execution so we'll say cs.execute async and we'll put our sql1 string in there and uh, that's going to kick that one off and i'll go down and put two after our second one so now we've got the first one which is a great big insert um, and then we've got our second one, which is just a select, uh, that we're going to normally, if we use just execute, we would have to wait for the first one to finish um, before we could do the second one. Um, but in this case, because we're just kicking it off uh, asynchronously, um, we're going to get the result from the second one right away because the code does not stop to wait for the first one. And that's the whole idea. So you could kick off a whole bunch of uh, updates and things like that all in a row as long as they don't depend on each other. Now make sure that if you use this, there's a bit of a danger because if you have anything with dependencies, 
they're all happening at the same time and you don't want to have that screw up. And the other thing is, is uh, if, if you have limited memory, um, you know, if you're doing a whole bunch of selects, then that can be a problem. So there we go, uh, hit F5, and you see that that happened very, very quickly. And uh, uh, you can see the, uh, uh, there was no wait at all. Um, it happened so fast, it went, just kicked it off and then went straight to the second one. Um, so that's great, and, and uh, like I said, you can kick off a whole bunch of in a row that all happen at the same time, so you can definitely get some parallel processing happening there, uh, different tasks, as long as they're not dependent, it doesn't matter, and, uh, and, and that's, can be very, that can be very handy. Um, so what I'll do here is I'm going to change our second SQL string just to look at our results, so I'm going to comment, I commented out the uh, asynchronous insert. Um, and I'm just going to select the top 100 from 1 million example where the number of values is greater than 2 million because that's what we inserted just to sh show you, give you an idea that the data did get inserted. I mean, this would fail or if it was still running. <laughs> um, and you can actually pull uh, the query to see how it's doing, which I might cover in another, um, in another episode. But as you can see, uh, the query did finish. Um, in the time that we were talking there, and you can see there's uh, you know number one from the original, and there's two million and one, two million two, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, that is how you can use execute async in Python. Hope you enjoyed today's on discussion Snowflake. on how to use execute async with Python on Snowflake. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel, click the bell when you see the bell, and if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.